I've got the top 10 must ads for this week in fantasy basketball coming up next on Beat the Odds. Don't go anywhere. Hello sports fans and welcome back to another episode of Beat the Odds. I'm going to count down the top 10 must ads ahead of week 18. If you like this content, please smash that like button. And a special thanks goes to all of our subscribers who have been watching these videos as you now account for almost 20% of all viewers. To the other 80% of viewers that haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so as it helps me create these videos for you. Also, leave a comment on a player that you think deserves to be on this list. This episode is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy Sports. Use the promo code BEATTHEODDS to double your first deposit up to $250. And first time users get a free square. For example, if LeBron was a free square and you had to bet on him to score one point and he did, then you win. Now let's dive right into the list here at number 10. We have Duncan Robinson, 29% owned over the last two weeks. He's got 31 minutes per game, 18.8 points, 1.5 rebounds, 3 assists, 4.8 threes, 0.8 steals, 0.8 blocks, 1.5 turnovers on 54% shooting from the field and 100% from the line. Now, Robinson won't likely stick in the starting lineup because of his deficiencies at the defensive end, but he has taken the six-man role and run with it. His three-point marksmanship is truly remarkable and as he has hit five or more threes in his last three games. It's always a great idea to jump on a player while he's hot, and picking up Robinson this week makes a lot of sense if your team needs outside scoring help. Let's go to number 9, we have Rui Hachimura, 22% owned. Over the last two weeks, he's got 32 minutes per game, 19 points, 4.5 rebounds, 1 assist, 2.5 threes, 0.8 steals, 1 block, 0.5 turnovers, on 63% shooting from the field and 50% from the line. While it's always tricky to roster a player on the Lakers not named AD or LeBron, Hachimura has proven worthy of a spot in, in the starting lineup. He's effectively won the job over Torian Prince, and the Lakers have rewarded him with 30 plus minutes in six straight games. Rui has posted some very useful lines in those games, including a season high 36 point barrage against Utah. Moving on to number eight, we have DeAndre Hunter, 37% owned over the last two weeks. He's got 27 minutes per game, 22 points, 4.7 rebounds, one assist, 2.7 threes, 0.7 steals, 0.7 blocks, one turnover on 48% shooting from the field and 100% from the line. Here is another player that has solidified a nice role on his team, Atlanta, despite its defensive struggles, is an offensive juggernaut and Hunter, despite arguably being the third best combo forward on the team, is still able to get his in somewhat limited court time. His knee issues seem like a thing of the past, and now that he's healthy, we should be able to, to get consistent production from him for the rest of the season. Let's go to number 7, we have Paul Reed, 58% owned. Over the last two weeks, he's got 29 minutes per game, 10.6 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds, 1 assist, 0 0.2 threes, 0 0.4 steals, 1.4 blocks, on 63% shooting from the field and 100% from the line. Now, Reed was an obvious pickup once Embiid went down with his injury, and while he did see some more floor time, he hasn't really been able to produce like many had hoped he would. He still is a must-add at this point due to that potential, though. He can hold a 15.10 rebound two block line on a regular basis and now that his minutes are starting to creep north of 30 a night, this could be his averages to finish out the year. Let's go to number 6, we have Alex Caruso, 59% owned, 31 minutes per game, 10.3 points, 4.3 rebounds, 3 assists, 1.7 threes, 1.7 steals, 2 blocks, 2 turnovers, on 57% shooting from the field and 100% from the line. Now why is Caruso back on this list? Is it the measly 10 points a night? Maybe the turnovers are turning fantasy managers off? Or maybe, just maybe, we're having a hard time understanding Caruso's value. How many players in this league can give you four stocks a night? Those are categories that Caruso excels in and he can do it from the point guard position. If you don't count points as a category, Caruso would be a top 20 player in this league. Let's go to number five. We have Trey Murphy the third, 53% owned over the last two weeks. He's got 30 minutes per game, 12.8 points, 4.4 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 2.4 threes, 1.8 steals, 1.8 blocks, 0.2 turnovers on 37% shooting from the field and 78% from the line. Now Murphy is another player that's a little misunderstood. He's not part of the big three in New Orleans, but his role is crucial to both his team and any fantasy managers that happen to have them on, your, on their squad. Most fantasy rosters are focused on picking up offensive players to start the year, which makes it crucial to pick up players like Murphy if you want to have a true all-around team. Let's go to number four. We have Precious Achua, 58% owned, 41 minutes per game over the last two weeks, 16 points, 12 rebounds, 1.8 assists, 0.8 threes, 1 steal, 1.8 blocks, 2 turnovers, 
on 64% shooting from the field and 65% from the line. Now, Precious is going to be coming off this list in short order simply because of how much court time he sees. He has come over as an add-on piece in the huge OG trade, and he's been the most valuable piece so far because OG hasn't been able to stay healthy. Achua's value lies in the volume of minutes he gets, so as long as the Knicks trot him out for 35 minutes a night, he deserves ownership. Let's go to number three. We have Asar Thompson, 60% owned over the last two weeks. He's got 30 minutes per game, 13.5 points, 6 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 0.3 threes, 1.8 steals, 1 block, 0.8 turnovers on 54% shooting from the field and 14% from the line. Get in on the Thompson Twins sweepstakes while you still can. Most of us are familiar with how Asar started the season, and now that the season's winding down and Detroit is in tank mode, you can expect Asar to get a long look to close out the year. Free throw percentage and threes aside, Asar can be a positive contributor in every other category. Pick him up if you still can. To number two we go, we have Amen Thompson, 48% owned, 33 minutes per game over the last two weeks, 15.2 points, 10.2 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 0.2 threes, 1.8 steals, 1.2 blocks, 2 turnovers on 61% shooting from the field and 50% from the line. Amen was slotted into the starting lineup with Fred Van Vliet out. But now that Fred's back, Amen has been moved back to the bench. That's not a bad thing at all. Amen still posted 28 and 33 minutes off the bench in the last two games, and he's been one of the most impactful players on the Rockets during that stretch. Both Thompson twins are freakishly athletic. Amen is a slightly better shooter, which is why he's getting the edge on this list. And finally, at number one, we have Ayo Desunmu, 45% owned over the last two weeks. He's got 38 minutes per game, 18.5 points, 4 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 4 threes, 0.8 steals, 0.3 blocks, 2 turnovers on 46% shooting from the field and 100% from the line. Now, I'm puzzled as to why Ayo isn't on more fantasy teams. He has a clearly defined role, essentially filling the spot left behind by Zach Levine. And he has done nothing but produce in that role. He has been a true marksman from deep and he's been productive on the boards and as a facilitator for the Bulls. There is truly no reason why Io should be left on the wire. And that's going to do it here for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like and of course subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I am going to sign off for now, but I will catch you guys on the next episode.